Yesterday at around 10 p.m., I saw in the news that the SSU, the Special Service Unit, had been disbanded by the Acting Inspector General of Police. I believe he's called Noor Gabo. And in this particular video, I want us to analyze why Ruto's government had disbanded the Special Service Unit. Was it a death squad or was it a redundant unit receiving public funds for nothing? We'll get into that shortly, but before we do that, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula. I'll be the first one to pop up. Hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Now, the former DCA George Kinoti upgraded the special service unit last year to become a full-fledged department at the Directorate of Criminal Investigations. So clearly, to George Kinoti and the other members sitting in uh, our previous National Security Council, found this special service unit to be very, very important. But now suddenly, President William Ruto is ordering the Acting Inspector General of Police to shut down that entire unit completely and to recall its officers back to headquarters for further instructions. So that is what I want us to look into. I want us to look at why the special service unit was shut down. Because I'm sure in politics nothing happens just for the sake. There's always a reason behind it. Now reason number one to me, the special service unit was shut down because it was the unit behind a majority of the extrajudicial killings in this country including the likes of Jacob Juma and all those people who are found floating in Rivayala. And don't just take David Ofula's word for it. I'm just a political analyst, so I don't have real access to intelligence reports. But that statement that the Special Service Unit was a hit squad that was murdering Kenyans came from a more credible source than me. It came from the President of the Republic of Kenya. William Ruto is actually very busy disclosing the dark secrets of the Kenyatta administration. Just take a second or two to watch this video. Wale ambao tulishindana na wao, watulize boli, waliharibu inchi yetu, watupatia na fasi, tuifanyie ukarabati na tuipange iweze kwenda mbele. Walikuwa na miaka mitano ambayo walitumia kuharibu mambo ya inchi yetu. Uchumi ikaharibika, tukawa na madeni, mambo ya usalama ikaharibika, polisi wakabadilika, wakawa ni watu wakuaua wa Kenya badala ya kuwalinda. Tumevunja, ile ilikuwa inaitua special sijui nini ya polisi ambayo ilikuwa inaua wa Kenya kiholela. That is the history we want to forget. Let our competitors not remind us of the many things they did against this country. We have also a plan on how to secure this country so that we avoid the shame of Kenyans killed through extrajudicial killings and put in Yala River and other rivers. We are going to secure this country going into the future. So I want to promise the people of Kenya that Kenya is on sound footing and we have a plan that will take this country into the future. So clearly, President William Ruto had a serious problem with the extrajudicial killings and he wasted no time investigating who was behind it and he exposed the killers on national television. That to me is a good thing, uh, rather is a good development for the families of people like Jacob Juma so that they can move about knowing that justice has been served or is on the verge of being served because I believe once that area has been disbanded, some action is going to take place. Which now brings me to the second reason for the disbandment of the SSU. Now reason number two for the Special Service Unit being disbanded and recalled, in my opinion, is so that proper investigations can be done into its activities since the time it was founded by George Kinoti. I'm sure by now our intelligence forces are combing through the emails, text messages, and even the back channels of communications that are purview to the secret services of this country. And hopefully the perpetrators will be pinpointed and dealt with appropriately. And hopefully publicly, because it's a good thing the president is coming out and saying this to Kenyans, because we were seeing every now and then on national television that a body has been found 
floating in River Yala. I even saw in uh, somewhere in Machakos there was another body that was chopped up in pieces linked with politics and it's found in a garage stashed in a vehicle. It has rotted there for months and months before they even discovered. So that kind of thing was taking place. Investigations were hitting a dead end and now the president is telling us it is because this special service unit was actually working for the government. Under the DCI, it was founded by George Kinoti. So all those hit squads that were killing people, that people were being found in rivers, others are chopped up, others are dismembered, you can't even know who they are. That was happening under the special service unit, according to our president. And I don't believe the president would lie, and I would also like to believe that he has access to any and all uh, intelligence reports in this country, even those that are classified. Because you even wonder, if someone is killed in Kitengela, they end up in a river somewhere in Kisumu. Those of you who have traveled in this country, you know that as you exit or enter a new county, there is a checkpoint. You'll be checked in Naivasha, you'll be checked in Nakuru, you'll be checked all the way even as you cross Transoia County and proceed. All those checkpoints, how are you moving a dead body that far? It's one of two things. You have to be a security, you have to be a law enforcement officer so that when they stop you, you just show your badge or some identification, maybe your uniform, and they don't search you, you just proceed. Either that or someone powerful with a good budget or even just an institution with a good budget provides a helicopter which can consume even 200,000 fuel for you to go dump a body somewhere. So this is, these are very, very shocking things. And people are actually calling President William Ruto a murderer in the run-up to this election. And now we are discovering <laughs> that those who are behind the extrajudicial killings were within government. They were actually working within the DCI, an entire unit that was made to become a full department by the outgoing DCI, George Kinoti. So for me, this is a good development that the president is coming out and letting us know the state of the nation and what was going on behind the scenes. And I'm sure even those who voted for him and even those who didn't, and above all else, in fact, the families of those who they have lost people, they're actually happy about this development, that they can finally know so-and-so are the people behind this. And this is what some of you had to say about this on Twitter. Abuga Makori, EGH, is saying, Breaking, renowned advocate Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi alias Granmola says slain businessman Jacob Juma was killed by elite police squad disbanded by President William Ruto on Thursday in 2016, moments after he left his office. I think because he has name-dropped uh, Ahmed Nasir, we might as well just feature Ahmed Nasir's actual tweet. Now, this is what uh, lawyer Ahmed Nasir Abdullah is saying. When I used to tell Kenyans or the world that former President Uhuru's government used to kill Kenyans as an official governmental policy, you used to think I was an alarmist. Jacob Juma was killed by his team after he left my office on that fateful day. I know who ordered the killings, or rather his killing. Professor is saying, so that special service unit killed Jacob Juma and it was the government that ordered. Halafu kina jirongo wakakua sponsored kusema it was Ruto. Blip, I won't say the remaining bit. <laughs> Jack Miner is saying, Jacob Juma was killed by the special man service unit, but Cyrus Jirongo was paid by the government to blame the killing on William Ruto. M. Suhail is saying, in pictures, Meshak Yebei, Jacob Juma, Kipiegon Kenei, and Paul Gisheru, all killed by the DCI hit squad to taint and threaten William Ruto. Lakini, Mungu ni nani. Then the final tweet by Professor, this one I actually found interesting. He's saying, even Raila Odinga knows it was the special service unit that had been disbanded by Ruto killed Jacob Juma. It was order from above. That unit killed Kenyans and dumped them huko Rivayala. This should be revisited. And he actually attached a video of Raila Odinga uh, making remarks about this. And so let's just briefly look at that video of Raila making comments on this. Juzi mtu yetu, engineer, Jacob Juma, anapigwa risasi, karisasi kumina nani, na askari, mba naitu at the flying squad, 
wanasukuma wanafukuza ye wanakwenda wanaona mpale ambaye hakuna watu wanamzuia ye pale wanakwenda wanampiga ye risasi pa 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 alafu wanakwenda wanatuma habari kwa police station so for me i feel like the election of william bruto is paying dividends we are getting to know so many things <laughs> that we would never have known from the story of state house spending 4 million every day on azimio campaigns to even who is behind the extrajudicial killings and so on and so forth so if this is the tone of the new government it's going to be a very good 5 years and kenyans will actually provide another 5 years for them to proceed if they disclose all the dark and shady deals that happened prior and bring all those people into account and they also keep the freight watertight so that moving forward we don't have any other killings we, we don't want to see anyone even in azimio any whistle blow coming to sakam in any way be it through poisoning shooting and all those kind of things so this is a very good tone set by the president i'm sure most of you would agree and we hope it stays that way but i'd really love to know your comments so please drop me your comment in the comment section below i'll do my best to read it and also to give you a response now in the event you're here for the first time please go on and hit the subscribe button and if you're watching from a different platform just head on over to youtube search for david ofula i'll be the first one to pop up hit the subscribe button and you're gonna be getting a ton of content of this nature if politics is something you're passionate about this is definitely the one channel that you really really need to subscribe to all right guys adios see you in the next video an hour or so from now